documents have been filed on behalf of the Attorney General, urging the Supreme Court to set aside its judgment dated July 28, 2021. This close call 3-2 judgment restrained Supreme Court Judge Clemens Jackson Onyonuga from hearing the criminal trial of former Ghana Cocobot CEO Dr. Stephen Oponi. Justice Onyonuga has since 2017 been hearing the case as an additional High Court judge. In July 2021, Dr. Oponi's lawyers filed an application at the Supreme Court asking that it restrains Justice Honyonuga from hearing the matter. He alleged that his right to be heard fairly had been breached by the judge, aside from a demonstration of bias. The allegations flowed from Justice Honyonuga's ruling on submission of no case application. Dr. Oponi's lawyers contend the judge committed an error of law when he rejected some documents submitted as evidence. The decision to restrain the judge, the AG says, is unfair in that the case will be entrusted to an entirely new judge who has not had the benefits of the full trial, including assessing and observing the demeanor of the witness. He therefore wants this decision reviewed and set aside. There are poor harvest prospects in communities downstream the white and black Volta following Burkina Faso's eminent opening of the spill gates of the Bagre and Kapianga dams on Friday. Farmers in the communities are yet to harvest their produce and the possibility of another destruction of farms looms. Sunabel, the agency that manages the Bagre and Kopienga dams in Burkina Faso, has announced that the annual spillage of the dams would take place from Friday, August 27, to Monday, August 30th this year. Notice to the National Disaster Management Organization, Sunabel said it had decided to begin opening the valves of the dams in the coming days due to the rapid rate of rise in the water levels. It therefore urged residents of communities downstream the White and Black Volta to move to higher grounds for safety. The Ghana Police Hospital is to commence the second phase of mass burial exercise for unidentified dead bodies by the close of work this week. A statement signed by Deputy Superintendent of Police, Yao Nketia Yebois, Head of Public Affairs, Ghana Police Hospital, said 200 unclaimed and unknown bodies will be buried to decongest its mortuary. It urged citizens to contact the pathology department of the hospital from Monday, August 23, 2021, to help identify the bodies. This, the statement said, would avert a situation where such bodies were added to those earmarked for mass burial. More than half of the 233,670 pensioners on the SNIT payroll currently receive less than 1,000 Ghana cities per month. Director of Planning, Research, Monitoring and Evaluation at the National Pensioner Regulatory Authority, Mr. Ernest Amate Vondi, has disclosed. Out of this number, he said, 1,669 people were on low pensions of less than 300 Ghana cities per month 
with 26,571 of them receiving pension between 301 Ghana cities and 499 Ghana cities. The next bracket is people who receive 501 Ghana cities but less than 1,000 Ghana cities and the number is 124,655. This means that cumulatively, 152,895 people earn pensions less than 8,000 Ghana cities, which represent 53% of the total number. Mr. Amate Vondi said this was part of the reasons for the diversification of the pension base, which led to the introduction of the three-tie pension scheme in 2010. The Chamber of Petroleum Consumers says the current increase in fuel prices is largely due to the recent depreciation of the Ghana cities. Fuel prices at the pumps of major oil marketing companies shot up from about 6.28 Ghana cities to 6.35 Ghana cities over the weekend, an increase that many consumers have expressed concern over. Executive Secretary of OPEC, Duncan Amwa, said a review of the pricing policy regime might be the only option to mitigate the increase in fuel prices. Quote, this recent increase of about 12 pesos per liter has seen fuel prices move from 6.28 Ghana cities to 6.35 Ghana cities for most oil marketing companies. Some are even doing 6.38 Ghana cities, that is a 16 pesos variant. It is clearly a concern and a source of worry to all of us, he said. The current situation comes at a time when Brent crude oil prices on the world market as at noon on Monday, 23rd August 2021, was selling at $6.28 per barrel after dropping from over $75 per barrel at the end of July. Sources at the Bank of Ghana have confirmed that the $1 billion interest-free money expected from the International Monetary Fund as part of the Special Drawing Rights Program has hit the accounts of the Bank of Ghana. The Board of Governors of the IMF at the start of August 2020 approved a general allocation of special drawing rights equivalent to 650 billion US dollars for its member countries to boost global liquidity. The 1 billion dollars set aside for Ghana is thus the country's share of the increased allocation made by the IMF. Special drawing rights can be described as an international reserve asset created by the IMF to supplement the official reserves of its member countries. As such, SDRs can provide a country with liquidity. Madagascar is on the brink of experiencing the world's first, quote, climate change famine, according to the United Nations, which says tens of thousands of people are already suffering, quote, catastrophic levels of hunger and food insecurity after four years without rain. The drought, the worst in four decades, has devastated isolated farming communities in the south of the country, leaving families scavenging for insects to survive. UN estimates that 30,000 people are currently experiencing the highest internationally recognized level of food insecurity, level 5, and there are concerns the number affected could rise sharply as Madagascar enters the traditional lean season before harvest. Quote, this is unprecedented. These people have done nothing to contribute to climate change. They don't burn fossil fuel, and yet they're bearing the burnt of climate change, said Ms. Thackrell. 
In the remote village of Vandiova in Boisari district, families recently showed a visiting WFP team the locust that they were eating. The first group of 51 evacuees from Afghanistan have arrived in Uganda. The group landed at Entebbe International Airport aboard a private chartered flight on Wednesday morning, Uganda's foreign minister said in a statement. The ministry says the group is transiting through Uganda and will move on to the U.S. and other countries. not clear how long they will be hosted in Uganda. The evacuees include men, women, and children who have undergone COVID-19 testing and will go into quarantine, the statement says. The evacuation followed the U.S. government's request to Uganda to take in some of the people fleeing the crisis in Afghanistan since the Taliban takeover. Last week, a Ugandan junior government official told the BBC that Uganda was to take in 2,000 Afghan refugees at the request of the U.S. government. But several senior officials later said discussions on the issue were still underway. Uganda hosts more than one million refugees who have fled several conflicts and other disasters across eastern Africa. The acting governor of Kenya's capital, Nairobi, has approved a local measure that prohibits spitting in public and blowing of noses without a handkerchief. The new rules also ban the playing of loud music in public spaces, terming it as public nuisance. They criminalize urinating in undesignated places and discharging dirty water or effluent into the streets or water drainage systems. Footpaths have also been protected by the new regulations, with residents not allowed to plant trees or hedges in the footpaths and motorcycle riders banned from using them. She signed the measure, Nairobi acting governor Anne Konedu said the city ought to be, quote, clean and hygienic, as it was the, quote, face of Kenya. Cristiano Ronaldo left Juventus training on Wednesday with an arm injury and will be assessing ahead of their game against Empoli on Saturday. The 36-year-old took a blow to his right arm after a challenge from Alexandro and was accompanied off the pitch by members of Jews' medical team. Sunday, Ronaldo was a surprise omission from the starting lineup for U Syria opener at Udinese. But boss Max Allegri insisted that the decision was purely tactical and was not the player's choice. Ronaldo came off the bench to score a last minute winner, only for it to be disallowed by VAR for a marginal offside as the game finished 2 2. Juventus expect Ronaldo to stay at the club despite him being open to leaving this summer. His current contract at the Alliance Stadium runs until June 2022 and he is earning 31 million euros per year after tax. However, no club has made an offer for him and he has not officially told Juventus he wants to leave. Six-time champion Serena Williams has become the latest high-profile player to pull out the next week's U.S. Open. In a post on social media, the 39-year-old American great said she needed time to allow her body to, quote, heal completely from a torn hamstring. (music) 
Williams joins defending men's champions Dominic Thame plus Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal in pulling out of this year's final Grand Slam. A tournament at Flushing Meadow at New York begins on 30th August. Williams wrote on Instagram, After careful consideration and following the advice of my doctor and medical team, I have decided to withdraw from the U.S. Open to allow my body to heal completely from a torn hamstring. Alikem Kumochi has taken to the internet to celebrate his ex-wife, Pokelo Nari, and render an apology to her as well. Pokelo celebrated her birthday on Tuesday, August 24th, and in his birthday message to her on Instagram, Elikem stated how he regretted not holding his marriage to her down. He also went on to ask the Zimbabwean entrepreneur with who he has a son for forgiveness, stating that she has made him a better man. In the post, Ali Kim, who's also a fashion designer, commended Pekelo for taking good care of their son, adding that seeing how well the boy looks brings an unexplainable joy in his heart. Rapper Kanye West has filed papers to officially change his name to be known simply as Ye. He cited, quote, personal reasons in the court document filed in Los Angeles. It comes almost three years after the material music star, fashion designer, and presidential hopeful tweeted about changing his name after releasing an album titled Ye. Time, he referred to, quote, the being formerly formerly known as Kanye West before announcing, quote, I am ye. As well as being an abbreviation of his current name, the 44-year-old has previously said his new moniker has religious significance for him. Quote, I believe ye is the most commonly used word in the Bible. And in the Bible, it means you, was said in 2018, discussing his album title with radio host Big Boy. Mm -hmm. 